Hey, hey, and welcome to this introduction to MATLAB. My name is Phil, and I'm here to walk you through some of the very basics of getting acquainted with this unique language. MATLAB was built by another language called C and stands for Matrix Laboratory. It is used by engineers, physicists, scientists, and the mathematicians, originally built to be optimizing the way we do math with matrices. Other features have been added, such as plotting, simulations, curve fitting, and the like. But it, at its core, it's a math language. And we'll go through some of the math in later videos. But this video is going to give you a spread of what to look for and how to operate the MATLAB IDE. I've opened up a brand new tab here in, in MATLAB. And this is the software, right? This is an application. It's a a lot more than just what the core programming language is. The IDE offers you a fuller body, and IDE itself stands for Integrated Developing Environment. It's got a lot more than just the syntax that is the MATLAB programming language. You can see we've got our current folder directory on the left, we've got a command window in the center, and we've got our workspace variables that we create on the right. The first thing you can start to do is to find your first variable, x equals 2, and hit enter. Right away, it just spits out x equals 2, and the right workspace, we end up with our first variable, x equals 2. You can do this with y equals 5, and unsurprisingly, your values start to show up on the right side. You can do x plus y, and you're beginning to, you know, it solves there, boom, we've got answer is 7, and it stores it in an answer variable because we didn't assign x plus y to a specific variable. But if we call maybe the vari variable z sum equals x plus y, now we've got the z sum that appears on the right into our workspace. You can see this would be pretty tedious to begin coding this way, which is why, sorry, coding this way in reference to putting line by line code and running each line in a command window like this. It's much easier to instead create a script, top left, new script, and we can write multiple lines of code, combine these together, and not have to worry about running line by line. And then you can use the run or run section, and we'll discuss the difference there in a second, but the first thing to do is save your file. Now, MATLAB files are .m files, okay? This is simply the way that MATLAB creates and reviews its own files. But you can store other files in the file directory, the current folder that the MATLAB file is stored in. If you're trying to ever pull data into MATLAB, pull other functions from other .m files, you have to keep these all in the same MATLAB folder. Now, back to running our script. A script is simply a stack or lines of code. It's much easier to develop here than going in the command window. As you hit enter, you can create more lines in your script and move things around accordingly. It won't affect how the output is. To run your file, you can always use your control S to save, and then you can use the run button. If you run this, you can see now it replaced our variables x, y, and z sum. But we had, an, oh, we've got the z here as well. But the z sum is left over from what we were running in the command window. That's because we haven't cleared these variables. We haven't told MATLAB to get rid of them, and so it keeps it along for the ride. If you want to get rid of your variables, you can use the clear all function, or it should be more of a command, and you can run that directly in your command window and it clears all the workspace variables. Of course, you can include this in your MATLAB script, and then it clears all variables previously and will create the new variables, x, y, and z, accordingly. Let's do that. You can hit Control enter to run, and that runs the section. Now, a code can be broken up into sections by using double parentheses. This would be section one, and you can come down below and do section two. These would run separately. And now we could see that if we create a new variable, www, that equaled x plus 
y plus z, and we do control enter, it only runs this individual section, right? To be more clear with how that's operating, if you run section one, it clears all variables, it defines x, y, and z, and it outputs them all to our command window right here. X, Y, and Z are what were added new. And in our workspace, here's X, Y, and Z with the values accordingly. If we were to run section two, we should just end up with www as a variable because we start out by clearing all the other variables. Oh, and you'll see, okay, we threw an error here because we cleared all the variables x, y, and z no longer exist, and thus you can't define a new variable that depends on these old values. You could define www as 11, and the code would run and give you that now here we are at 11, and here we are in our workspace with www equals 11. It gets a little bit annoying having all this crammed in our command window. What we can do is we can suppress outputs to do this, add a semicolon afterwards, of the lines that you want to suppress the outputs for. Now when you run your code, you'll notice just the z equals 8 was outputted because we didn't suppress it. There's no semicolon here. Now we still do have a lot of extra junk in our command window and to get rid of this you can use the CLC command which empties that out. I like to put this up in my initial command as well next to the clear all just to start every thing I run with a clear command window and fresh new variables. You'll notice that I'm using a comma in between these two commands. And this is another way that you can operate your functions. You can put them on different lines. You can put commas between them. It'll operate the same exact way, but you're letting MATLAB know that you're trying to do something different by putting a comma there. If you didn't do a comma, you can see now it thinks it's trying to use CLC on this clear all. It doesn't make much sense. So you have to let it know by using a comma to do that. Similarly, you can put multiple items on the same line. X equals five, Y equals three. And if we run this, it still runs the exact same. No problems there. And the Z outputs, if I did just a comma next to X equals five, the X would also output into our command window because we didn't suppress it with a semicolon. Now, deep down, this process of giving a name to a value is called assignment. And it's very important that we know how the variables are assigned and how things go along. If we wanted to create a new variable X beneath the X above, you can do this, but be careful to make sure you know what you're doing. We start out with x equals 5 on this line. We come to the next line, and it thinks we're assigning a new variable x. Now we're using x in our command here, though. What is x? Well, x is 5, as it's showing us right here, because we defined it previously as 5. And now it's going to be 5 plus 2, so x should be 7. If we run this, absolutely. Our variable over here now identifies that x is 7. All right, don't expect it to go back to 5, though, unless you do something, because now that line has been overwritten, because MATLAB will write over variables as you go. And then when z is called, it's going to have the new value of x, 7, plus the value of y, which is 3, which is why z is 10. That's enough for an initial introduction. Hop to the next video to learn more.